Patchy, congrats on the win. I uh, saw you limping in here a little bit. I mean, is that just your standard post-fight limping, or is it, is it a little bit worse than normal? Uh, no, he had um, good leg kicks, you know. Uh, he's a good striker, so I uh, kind of tore up my lead leg, but um, I didn't expect him to come out with leg kicks and calf kicks. I expected him to come out, throw a lot of left hooks and overhand rights. So, um, you know, I just kind of caught off guard a little bit, but, you know, it was good. That's, I guess that's what you expected for, for his game plan. What was your game plan going into it? I just wanted to keep long. I wanted to hurt him, you know. I thought if I touched him on the feet, I could knock him out or just take him down and submit him, smash him. I truly thought I'd be able to submit him, but uh, he had really good back defense. Um, the better I get on top and, you know, um, the, more, uh, the more submissions I show, I feel like people are starting to uh, get better defense. You know, uh, Mike Brown and ATT and his team, they're – you know, they're one of the best gyms in the world, so I'm not surprised he was well-trained. But I thought I was going to be able to slice through that defense and get a finish, which I'd like to, but, you know, um, it's five rounds, and I, I had to learn how to pace myself because I wasn't going to let the same thing happen what happened in my last title fight against Juan. Yeah, so in that regard, I mean, obviously you plan for five rounds. I mean, sh I'm sure you always plan and train for five rounds, but as you got that deep into it, how did things feel for you as you got in those later frames? I'm not sure, man. You know, I'm not in charge of the judges, but I thought I had a 10-8 round in the first. I mean, I had the back the entire round um, trying to threaten chokes. I brought him from his feet to his back while I was on his back, bent him back twice. I had his back, I think, in another the third round. The second round, I kind of tried to feel him out to see where he was on the feet, see if I could beat him there. I took him down again in the fifth round. I had his back again, almost had him guillotined. 48-47, I think, wasn't just. I think it should have been 49-47 or 49, even 46. I think I had a 10-8 round, so... Um, you know, I didn't want to leave it to the judges, though. You know, my coach told me in the round uh, that going into that fifth, Harry St. Ledger, uh, you go win this round. We leave no, uh, we need, leave no um, stones, you know, unturned. So we wanted to make sure we took this fight. You, um, you know where you stand now in the, in the bracket. Uh, did you watch Enrique Barzolo's fight yesterday? And then what do you think of his matchup with Megamedov? Because obviously you get the winner of that one. I'm excited, man. They do a lot. They're similar styles, similar pressures. Um, Enrique Barzola, he's impressive, man. You know, he has amazing cardio, amazing um, pressure, um, amazing jujitsu defense, uh, wrestling offense. So um, I think that's going to be a great fight. I'm just, uh, I'm honored to share the cage with one of those names. You know, they're big names, Maga Megov and Barzola. And, um, you know, um, I've trained with Maga and I've also trained with. Uh, uh, AKA Coach Hav, Coach Hav and um, Habib's team. So I know he's well, uh, Barzola's well trained as well. So I'm just excited for the matchup. Much respect to him. And, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, I'm excited to be in the semifinals fighting for a chance to get back at the belt and back at the million dollars, you know? What's the strategy now? Because if, if this was a normal fight, uh, you could say, hey, I'd love to fight in two months. But now you're tied to a specific thing and all kinds of things could happen that could delay when you get back in there next. So in terms of, training and prep what are the next steps for you how chill do you take it for the next few months and and how does that affect you i guess um i don't know how to take it chill man my coaches cannot pry me out of the gym so like i'm going to be in the gym no matter what whether it's me or i'm helping my teammates i'm always going to be there i want to give back to the people that helped me there's a lot of people that helped me for this camp so i want to get back in the gym help them out more importantly i want to really see my family spend some time with my daughter enjoy her birthday enjoy some time with my mother my sisters my brother all my friends, you know, all my supporters, you know, there's so many people that are out here supporting me. So I just want to have some time for myself to, um, to, to spend time with the people that mean a lot to me. And um, the time off's great, you know. I'm going to get better in the meantime, and this is not the best version of me. I'm only getting better. I'm 28 years old, and I'm going to stay dedicated until I win this million dollars and I win this tournament and this world title. Okay, so, um, so how, how did the weight control goes for you um how much weight did you get back after the weigh-in i got a lot back honestly i mean i don't like to disclose it but let's say it was over 155 pounds okay and um was it your strategy to take hit take his back at all, all through the round you know even though like you were not uh, uh, you were not able to finish like was it your strategy to take a point by taking his back no i just wanted to submit him i was trying to submit him he just had good defense i was really trying to squeeze it and submit him um, he just had good defense. Like, I mean, Kyoji Horiguchi's only lost for world title fights. This is his first fight outside of the Ryzen world title, Bellator, UFC world title fight where he lost, where it wasn't a world title fight. So, you know, I'm glad to have that name on my record. You know, it's just so prestigious to me. I deserve it, you know. I've been hunting this name since 
uh, New Year's um, in Japan on Ryzen 20. So now I'm here. I just beat the, the, um, the, you know, the most recent, I think, Ryzen world champion at Bantamweight and a former Bellator world champion. So I'm happy, and I beat him in a world title setting, five rounds. Yeah, congrats. That was a great fight. Thank you. Next question from Ronald. This is Ronald Eastman, and I just want to go back to just the reason we just said about how, why this, this win like, really mean a lot to you, you know, because the, the opponent, he has done so much in his career. So with that, how for you, how for you will this be remembered of all the other fights that you've done in the past? Um, it's just the experience I could gain from it, you know, doing five rounds with a guy of that level, you know, making adjustments on the fly, um, you know, having fun out there as well, um, getting used to it, you know, the cage time, I need this cage time to get better, I want to be, the, I, I know I'm, I know I'm one of the best band weights in the world, but I want to be the best band weight in the world, in the gym, I train like I am. I, I compete with the best in the world, but it's on showtime when, you know, granted, we are on showtime, but it's uh, when the showtime happens, you have to perform, and I think that's the most important thing. When the lights are on, who can perform? And I always can perform, you know? Out of my now 17 fights, even the one I lost, every fight I come to perform. Awesome. Thank you so much, Patchy. That concludes our time with Patch. Thank you so much. I appreciate you all. Recording stopped.